Hey everyone, Zephyr here, and welcome to another Sims 2 speed build. Today we are building a coffee shop in The Sims 2, and you might be thinking, Zephyr, you've said before that you don't like coffee, why are you building, like, two coffee shops in the span of, like, a couple months? The answer is, I, I like coffee shops. I, I like the vibe of coffee shops, I just don't like coffee. And I feel like that's valid. Coffee shops are nice places to go to either talk to someone, or study, or just do some work on your laptop, and they offer other drinks other than coffee anyway. And just because I don't personally like coffee doesn't mean I have to deprive my sims of their coffee. I hope the straw man that I'm making up for this situation understands where I'm coming from now, because nobody watching this video knows that I don't like coffee. But I don't know, I, I just don't like the taste of it. I don't think adding cream or sugar helps the situation at all. Um, in order for me to even enjoy the taste of coffee, I pretty much have to turn it into glorified milk. And I, I get that people, like, drink coffee for the caffeine effects. It's just that I just don't feel the need to do that. And I don't want to put that bitter tasting thing in my mouth. And if I wanted to drink milk, I'd be drinking milk. That's my little coffee soapbox. But anyway, I wanted to make a cute, cozy cafe for my sims to visit, and I really like how it turned out. There's actually an apartment on top of the build, too. It's not really functional, but we can pretend it is, because sometimes aesthetic matters more than functionality. And you know what wasn't very aesthetic? It's the fact that I was listening to a horror book when I was building this build. You would think that kind of book would put me in the mood to kind of build a haunted Victorian mansion or something, but no, I was just vibing to my audiobook and building a cozy cafe. The book in question was Incidents Around the House by Josh Mallerman, and I just recently finished it, and it is so good. The book basically follows a little girl who is being haunted by a creature in her closet, which is, like, really cliche, but, like, it was so fun. And the audiobook in particular does a good job at capturing the little girl's thoughts and feelings just because the book itself is written from the perspective of the little girl and the voice actress who does the voiceover for the whole novel is phenomenal and really good at capturing the little girl's voice. Makes it really easy to get into the story and feel for the characters. I'm not gonna say more than that. If you're interested in like horror books, I recommend it because it was like really creepy and I enjoyed myself. Anyway, I didn't really build this build for any reason in particular. I might end up using it in the future for my build a city challenge neighborhood. I'm not sure, but I, I didn't have any specific sim in mind when it came to this build. I was just inspired to make a coffee shop, so I did it. That being said, I do realize I need to start building more custom content free lots. This lot is not custom content free. It heavily relies on a lot of like Sims 4 to Sims 2 conversions because I'm in love with them, but I actually have a little neighborhood in the making that's gonna be completely custom content free that I want to like release to you guys, but it's just, I haven't gotten around to building for that neighborhood in a while, but I'm still working on it. It's not scrapped, it's just in hiatus. It, it's coming back. I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but a very important date is coming up this month. I'm recording this in September, this video is getting released in September, and it is an important month for Simmers. First of all, we actually just passed the 10th anniversary of The Sims 4, which is crazy to think about. But what's even crazier is on September 14th, it's going to be the 20th anniversary of The Sims 2's initial release. And I feel like I have to do something about it. Like, I've been planning a video for it for a couple months, but I've kind of, like, put it off until this month in order to actually finish the video. A couple days ago on TikTok, I made a joke that it was about 5% done, and it wasn't really a joke. It was kind of, like, the truth. Right now, it's, like, 8% done. But we're going to crank it out. It's going to be done. I'm going to have a video releasing on The Sims 2. 20th anniversary, but I'm a little stressed about it. I don't normally deal with deadlines because I normally just vibe and play The Sims 2 and post my little speed builds, right? And I don't really have any Sims 2 related news to share to people, so I don't feel like I need to get a video out in a timely manner. Sims 4 YouTubers are more used to deadlines because news comes out more often and they have to make videos about it in order to be one of the first people to like break the story and get the views or whatever, right? And I'm just over here vibing, playing my 20 year old game. 
but now I feel like since my favorite game of all time is having this big anniversary, I'm gonna have to make a video about it. And it's not necessarily about the views or whatever. Like, I just want to show my appreciation for this game because it's genuinely my favorite game of all time. And I feel like just letting the day go by without saying anything would not do the game justice. It's just I'm a little stressed. I haven't had a deadline since high school. I work in fast food. Like, I, I'm stressed. I'm kind of hoping that The Sims team actually acknowledges The Sims 2 anniversary in some way because 20 years is a big deal. I will say that the official TikTok account of The Sims reposted one of my old Sims 2 videos the other day, and I always like it when they do acknowledge the older games. So I'm kind of hoping we get a little something something for The Sims 2's anniversary, even if it's like a little nostalgic item in The Sims 4 that relates to The Sims 2, I don't know. Like, I I'm not expecting like a Sims 2 remastered or something, but honestly, just release the game for like the EA app, right? Like, why not? Anyways, I'm really excited about this. Expect a video from me about The Sims 2 on September 14th. Speaking of Sims 4 YouTubers, do you know what YouTube keeps doing to me? There's a tab in one of the, like, creator pages, right? It's called Inspiration, and the point of the tab is to show you things that might inspire you to make new videos on your channel. But when I tell you guys, every time I check out that tab, it's like the same exact thing. I mean it. It shows me videos from one specific creator and one creator only and that is little simsy so the algorithm is basically telling me hey you want to be a sims youtuber you you just need to become little simsy have you thought about that have you thought about just becoming little simsy because that's how you're going to become a sims youtuber little simsy is a sims youtuber you just need to become her that is what the algorithm on youtube is trying to tell me apparently and I don't know, no hate to Little Simsy. I like your videos and stuff, but like, I I can take inspiration from other people too. Like, why, why do I just need to become Little Simsy? You would just think that a tab labeled inspiration would encompass like many different creators who play The Sims because there's lots of us out there, but the YouTube algorithm is like, hey, if you want to be a Sims YouTuber, you need to be Little Simsy. So I'm just going to continue doing my own thing and not listen to the YouTube algorithm gods. I just find it funny that they're pushing her specifically. Like, there's nothing wrong with her content. Obviously, a lot of people follow her. I follow her. Um, it's just... There's other talented people too, like why are you just showing me one creator? It's weird. I just want to make it clear that this is a little Simsy hate free zone. If you don't like her, I don't want to hear it. I get that she won't be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm not everyone's cup of tea. That's why we have the wonderful option of subscribing to people we want to watch instead of subscribing to people that we don't want to watch. Like, th that's just the beauty of YouTube, and I don't get why people go out of their way to, like, hate on people that they don't like to watch. Like, the option is always there not to watch them. Bringing, like, mean girl energy and, like, jealousy into these kinds of situations just doesn't make sense to me and never will. Like, little Simsy works for her success. She streams daily, she posts videos daily, and I'm not saying it's like hard like crazy work but like she puts in the effort and like she deserves her community and that's coming from a fast food worker okay like I, I work full-time fast food it's a hard job it's harder than sitting on your butt and playing video games and but I, I I can still respect the people that sit down on their butts and play video games because that's honestly the goal I would love to have that and I think just sitting here feeling feelings of jealousy or whatever wouldn't be productive There's nothing wrong with wanting a job that is not difficult Like some say that fast food isn't difficult like you don't need particular skills to be in fast food But like I find facts fast food to be incredibly taxing on me personally because I'm really introverted and being around so many people all day is exhausting to me like it, it is taxing and I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to improve that and seeing content creation as something that could potentially get me out of fast food and thus have an easier life like I, I think that should be the goal for everyone to have like a job they're happy with and that doesn't make them feel like shit you know and I think being jealous of the people who achieve your dreams is kind of dumb. Like, I think it should be everyone's goal to find peace and happiness, and if that peace and happiness comes from content creation, I don't think shaming people or being jealous is something you should do. Like, 
it, it just that's the sign to me that you're not happy with yourself and you need to make changes i'm not saying like go start a youtube channel i'm not saying quit your job and find something else i'm saying make changes in your life to make yourself happier because being bitter and jealous is just something that's not good for you as a person for your mental health I'm going on this tangent because I think like hateful, spiteful comments are kind of like in the back of my mind right now because I've been getting some spicy comments on my TikTok. The first one's kind of funny because I just imagine a middle schooler saying this. I'll read it verbatim to you. How would you feel if someone told you that you suck and you are a loser who needs a life? Question mark, exclamation mark, end quote. This one was really funny to me because like I've never seen this user in my life and they just asked me this weird hypothetical question. So I decided to reply, I'd wonder why a middle schooler was commenting on my videos, end quote. Because like, that just came out of nowhere and makes no sense. The comment actually took me back to middle school because it just, it, it just screams middle school to me. And I was like, why is an actual child like trying to bully me? Like, what well, what are you doing? Like, go, school just started, like go do homework or something. Like, what? <laughs> but the second spicy comment is probably my favorite comment I've ever gotten about my appearance ever. The comment reads, You look exactly how I expected a 30-year-old who posts Sims videos would look. End quote. First of all, I agree. Thanks for noticing. And second of all, this user dropped the ball because they decided to comment this on a video that didn't even feature my face. Like, people couldn't even see the full like vision they had like they should have commented it on a video that showed my face granted i don't post a lot of videos showing my face but he actually i'm assuming a guy because um, whatever but this user actually made it so people had to go on my page and look for my face thus giving me more engagement and you know more views more likes whatever in order to get his joke. And I feel like it just would have been better as a hater to just commented on a video that showed my face. Like, uh, these people are not particularly smart. And I really feel like that little mess up just paints the picture of what kind of person comments these kinds of things on TikTok videos is really like. I'm not a fan of bullying people, but if you start, like, trying to start something with me, I have the right to defend myself, right? So calling the kid dumb i i feel like is fair anyway i guess we'll talk about the build we're finishing up the apartment upstairs you could technically turn the slot into a residential lot and have your sim live here maybe try to run the downstairs of the shop as a home business which is something you can actually do in the sims 2 and it's a feature i never really use i i just kind of thought of it right now and i was like hey you could do this with this slot also my voice might be sounding a little different right now because i might have to do some editing magic the house is kind of noisy right now and I don't necessarily want all the background noise in my video so if it sounds a little funky I'm sorry I'm experimenting we'll, we'll see how it goes like quite a few of my builds lately I didn't really have a specific sim in mind for this apartment so it's kind of generic but I feel like it turned out to be cute it's just like a nice cozy studio space and I feel like most sims would be comfortable living in this space I mean I I'd feel comfortable living in this space so if it meets my standards it meets my sim standards One of the issues I had when I was playtesting this lot is the fact that the townies go upstairs and kind of go into the apartment for some reason I thought there would be an option to lock doors on community lots but there isn't but there would be an option if your sims own the lot. I don't see it as a huge issue because there's ways to get around it if it bothers you too much. Like you can place an object in front of the stairs or the door to the apartment and sims won't be able to access it. But that is just something to keep in mind if you want to download this build. I post most of my builds down below on my Patreon for free. And if you're seeing this video, my build is already posted over on Patreon. So go check that out. If you want, you can also follow the Patreon for free and you'll be able to stay up to date with my builds that way. Also, I'm sorry for hitting my desk like 20 times during the last like 2-3 minutes. I'm not sure... What's going on? I guess I just got a little excited and my mic is just picking up on my excitement. 
I'm very expressive when I talk, and especially when I'm talking to myself in front of the computer, I just tend to move around a lot. And one of the consequences of that is just you guys occasionally hearing me bumping into things on my desk. And one of the scarier consequences of that is something that I'd probably edit out of a video. But when I'm playing games with my friends, sometimes <laughs> I have an old desk, okay? It's like literally probably as old as The Sims 2, honestly. Like, I've, I've had this desk since I first started playing The Sims 2, so it's it's reaching the probably 22, 23 year mark, and it's an older piece of furniture, right? We actually got this desk secondhand because somebody was putting it to the curb for the garbage, right? And we picked it up, so it, it was old when we got it. And it shows its age, okay? Because sometimes when I'm playing games with my friends and I'm moving around, getting excited, yelling at the game, whatever, sometimes the part that is holding my keyboard on the desk falls off and makes a huge dramatic crashing sound. And you know, my mouse goes flying, my keyboard goes flying, and it's loud and kind of jump scares the people I'm in a call with. So you guys should be thankful that you're just experiencing me hitting my mic, hitting my desk, and not the huge, dramatic, loud crash that you could be experiencing if you were playing Dead by Day Daylight with me and I moved around too much and caused, you know, a random loud noise. Oh, and I have one more little anecdote to tell you guys. I had probably my favorite customer of all time come through drive through the other day. One of the furry variety. Uh, not that kind of furry. Not not like a human dressed as an animal. No, it was an actual, like, dog. It was technically two dogs, but the main interaction was with one of the dogs. And obviously there was a human in the car too, but whatever. Humans don't matter. There was two dogs in the car. They matter more. And the dog closest to me in the drive through window was uh, the younger dog. They were two Labrador Retrievers. And the younger one was so energetic and happy to see me. Like, she was, like, instantly, like, shaking her whole body at me. Like, not just shaking her tail, but shaking her body. And, like, she was really excited. And oh, it was the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. And the owner told me, like, the older one in the back was the father and the younger one was the daughter. And I don't know, it was just, I need every single car in drive through to contain a dog because it literally brightened my day. We got the uh, customer to pull up front so we could bring the food out when it was ready. And when I brought the food out, I asked her if I could pet the dog and she said yes. So I got to pet a dog and it literally brightened my whole day and made my shift way more bearable just to pet that dog. So I think if I were to ever run a restaurant and it had a drive through window, I would make it a requirement that you'd have to bring your pet to the drive through window in order to be served because I, I feel like it just brightens the experience for everyone involved. And then after my shift, I was trying to tell my dad about the story and how the father and daughter were in the car, like the father dog and the daughter dog. So I was like, yeah, and the dogs were father and daughter. And then for whatever reason, like, I decided to add the father was the older one and the daughter was the younger one. And my dad instantly laughs at me. I laugh at myself because I, I don't even know why I would say that. Like, I was dunking on kids for being dumb earlier in this video and then I go ahead and say something like that. But like I said, fast food chips are, like, really draining for me and sometimes when you're tired, you just end up saying things that are not particularly well thought out. So here I am finishing the downstairs portion of this build. I was debating not putting a bathroom in the main coffee shop because it's such a small space and in The Sims 2 in particular, Sims need space for activities. Pathing in the earlier Sims games can be pretty messed up. However, what is more messed up is when you send a Sim to a community lot and there's no bathroom. Then The Sims 2, without the use of mods, needs to pleat relatively quickly so it's easy to have your Sim accidentally pee themselves. So I, I just like having a toilet on the lot just in case. You never know. Plus having a readily available toilet just makes it even more embarrassing when your sims do pee themselves because there's a toilet right there. What are you doing? So even though I took away from the space of the main coffee shop, I decided it was a good idea to have the bathroom. Plus I think smaller builds in the sims tend to look cozier and more put together, more well decorated. It's easier to decorate them. 
them. So it was kind of like a win-win, though I acknowledge pathing could be an issue in gameplay. When I was playtesting this build, there was a little bit of issue. My test subject, Don Lothario, was having trouble like exiting the building at one point, but he was eventually able to exit once the sims that were blocking him got out of the way. If you download this build and that annoys you, you could probably add like another door to the build, like a back door, and I don't think pathing would be as much of an issue then, because your sim would have two possible exits. Plus, I'm sure safety inspectors would probably appreciate another exit in this building. This building in particular is probably not up to any fire code ever, but that is not my problem. There's a reason why fire codes exist, and that's because some of the buildings out there break them. There wouldn't be a fire code if every building just was perfect. The fire code was created because there's buildings out there that are not up to standards, and this is one of the buildings out there that are not up to standards. And I think that's pretty damn realistic. So here I am just adding the finishing touches of this coffee shop. I was really trying to make the business portion of this build feel cozy, like I've been saying, but also like a home kind of. I wanted it to be a nice, comfortable space for Sims to visit. Imagine it smells really nice in there, like cinnamon. You know what? I've been gatekeeping this fact, and it's only going to be interesting to some of you, but I happen to know of a very famous celebrity's house that happens to also smell like cinnamon. And this is not because I'm a stalker or anything. It's just I happen to have a friend who... I'm not going to say what her job was, but one of the parts of her job was oftentimes traveling to a person to complete a task, right? And she happened to live in a city that had a lot of celebrities. So sometimes celebrities would hire the organization and they would send somebody out to go and complete the task for the celebrity, oftentimes at their homes. And one day, Taylor Swift's team contacted the organization and they happened to send my friend out to go and do what she had to do, right? And that's how I learned that Taylor Swift's house smells like cinnamon. For the record, I don't think this is like super private information and Taylor has talked about like her favorite candles and stuff before, but it was just kind of cool learning that little tidbit. I realized that was kind of like a random little thing to drop at the end of a Sims 2 speed build, but hey, this is my channel, I do what I want on it. You'll never know what to expect when it comes to my voiceovers, and I think that is pretty much my brand. But anyway, we are just adding the finishing touches to the build now. We are going to be going into some screenshots soon. If you guys like the video, please give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more Sims 2 content, and if you would like to download this build or other builds of mine, you can check out my Patreon. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye guys.